Should you buy memory from a brand you haven't heard of before? Well, believe it or not, I actually have because I reviewed another set of RAM from this company before, the Asgard Loki RAM. And you can check that review out over here in which I really, really love that kit. I like it a lot and I still do. And also, I've been requested from some of my viewers to review this RAM. It's on the more inexpensive side of the RAM market right now, believe it or not. So is it worth it? Should you buy it? And what about the other kit of RAM? How does that compare to this one? So let's get into it. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JD from JD Tech here and welcome back to the channel where we discuss PC passion tech reviews, unboxings, and setup design. So if you're into that sort of thing, consider checking out the rest of the channel and subscribing. Okay, first thing before I get into anything, I'm going to talk about price, like straight up. This 16 gigabyte kit is $167 US, and believe it or not, is one of the cheapest DDR4 RAM kits you can get right now. It has gotten ridiculous. DDR4 RAM is hovering around $200, and if you can find some on sale, they're about $150. So at the time of this video, this is the current state of the RAM market. So I just wanted to bear that in mind before we get any further into this video. This is a 16 gigabyte kit from Asgard and runs at a speed of 2400 megahertz out of the box. As soon as you boot into the BIOS, the set frequency should be 2400 megahertz. For any reason it may not be, go into the memory settings, find the system memory multiplier or the alike and type in a multiplier of 24. The timings on this particular kit is 17, 17, 17, 39, which is fine. Shortening the timings don't really make any real world difference and not a major focus of mine when it comes to RAM selection. I'd like to add that I'm not including any synthetic benchmarks of this RAM because simply it's almost pointless unless you're testing different speeds. But other than that, there's really no need for it. Aesthetically speaking, these look okay. The LEDs are pretty nice and fluid and they're RGB, but unfortunately there's no software control over the LEDs. The LEDs are also very bright, so they really stand out. Whether you find that appealing or not is really up to preference. The only thing is that when the computer is asleep, the LEDs are still on, which makes sense since the RAM is still active during sleep, but the LEDs are very bright. And if you're trying to sleep and have your PC in your room, it could be a nuisance. So your only option would be to either shut off the PC or not have a see-through window panel. As far as the rest of the aesthetics go, it looks okay in my opinion. It seems a little over the top for me as I would have preferred something a little bit more simple for the style. That's honestly just my opinion though. Compatibility is a little weird too. I don't believe it's fully supported by the AM4 platform. On my Gigabyte AX370 motherboard, 8 gigabytes out of the 16 was being held on reserve. So only 8 gigabytes was usable. Alternatively, on my ASUS Strix B350F motherboard, it supports all 16 gigabytes with only around 150 megabytes in reserve, which is what it's supposed to be like. Maybe later on in a BIOS update for my Gigabyte board, it will have better support for this RAM. The Lilo Rice RAM is not overclockable. It will only stay at 2400 MHz, even with a boost in voltage. It won't go any faster. The AIM4 aspect may have a play in this, but the low-key RAM was overclockable, so that solidifies my conclusion. My experience with this RAM has been on and off. Sometimes my PC doesn't like to turn on with reoccurring blue screens with different errors. Yes, this could be the motherboard's fault, but there have been reviews mentioning the same problem with this RAM. Ultimately, you just have to keep rebooting the PC, which can be annoying, but the RAM does work. So would I recommend this Leo Rice RGB RAM? Well, if you need the more inexpensive option, then I can understand that. And yes, I would point you to this kit, but do expect some issues from some blue screening and you have to be okay with rebooting your PC to troubleshoot. Otherwise, I can't recommend this RAM for AM4 users due to its lack of support with the AM4 platform unless you have an ASUS board, which my B350F board does support all 16 gigabytes of RAM. There's no RGB control and the aesthetics are okay in my opinion. This kit may be of the most inexpensive, but it's a hard sell for me, even at that. I've had a better experience with the low-key RAM from Asgard, and I would prefer that kit over this one. I think the Leo Rice RAM would benefit from a simpler and more stylish design, integrated user-friendly software for the LEDs, and more reliability. That's my honest opinion. Hope you all enjoyed the review and found it helpful. If you're new here and want to see more content like this, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.